Laurel Home stood for 65 years. It served as a public housing and a community for low-income residents. However, through much destruction, additions, and the suburbanization of Cincinnati, the interest in the homes began to fade. In the 1990s, the government had new ideas for the Laurel Homes. The Hope Six plan would change the homes into mixed-use housing called City West. The hope for this was to create new environments for the West End of Cincinnati. Through analyzing the new mixed housing units, we find that this new idea for the West End may not be as successful as it was hoped. In 1932, FDR passed what was called the New Deal. Under the New Deal, the Public Works Administration made grants to states, municipalities, and other public bodies for the construction of low-tenant housing projects. The Public Works Administration made grants of 45% of the cost of such projects, with an amortization period of 60 years for the remaining 55%. During the existence of this program, there were 27 projects in demolished slum areas, of which Laurel Homes was one. The basic idea behind the New Deal was that a number of agencies came into existence which entered directly into slum demolition and new construction. The New Deal created a new emphasis upon federal responsibility for the welfare of all of the people. In sum, the idea behind the New Deal was creative destruction. Creative destruction is tearing down to replace what is supposed to be a more newer and more innovative construction than what was there before. Through the New Deal, the Laurel Homes were completed in 1938. The project consisted of 21 three- and four-story apartment buildings. The number of units per building were between 27 and 87. The total number of apartments was 1,039. The apartments catered to both white and black families. It was the first interracial public housing project and had between two and five rooms per apartment. What was also built during this time were the Lincoln Court homes as a part of the larger public housing project in the West End. These homes served the same purpose as the Laurel Homes. Because Laurel Homes was public housing funded by the government, the regulations the there were strict. Its operating budget demands that tenants be able to pay the required rent. Consequently, in accepting and rejecting applications for tenancy, a great deal of care is exercised not only in qualifying tenants as being in the low-income group, but also in making reasonably sure that every tenant will be able to meet his monthly rent. Each prospective tenant had to apply by giving their annual wages for their preceding year. The annual income that residents had were between $600 and $1,680. These numbers reflect what class level the Laurel Homes catered to, but many residents who lived in the Laurel Homes couldn't afford to live elsewhere. Until the homes were destroyed, it targeted the same class level of people, taking into account the economic inflation that takes place over time. When Laurel Homes opened the residential home, there was a subject community for those who lived there. Not only was Laurel Homes a multi-numbered apartment complex, but it had a park, school, market, and shopping center for the residents. Along with these amenities nearby, there was a cotton club, which was a jazz nightclub that welcomed anyone. However, many who came were lower class. This allowed those who lived in the Laurel Homes and Lincoln Homes to enjoy a good time and great music. The Laurel Homes seemed like an ideal place to live for many low-income citizens of Cincinnati. However, all of this began to change when the Highway Act of 1956 was passed. Voters approved a $9 million bond issue in clearance of the West End for the construction of the Mill Creek Expressway, known as I-75, and redevelopment of the surrounding blighted areas. The construction of the highway led to 13,000 dwellings that were demolished and it displaced 50,000 mainly low-income black residents during the years of 1950 and 1970. Because of this, the West End lost three-fourths of its population. Those who were displaced were integrated into the suburbs and the surrounding areas. This was due to the large suburban movement in the 1950s. With this huge displacement that took place, a sense of community was lost for the residents of the Laurel Homes. The city's focus now became on suburbia. After World War II, the GI Bill allowed for returning veterans to be able to put a down payment on a house. This was one of the reasons for the beginning of suburbanization. With being further away from the city, cars became the main mode of transportation, which enabled more suburbs to be built. The displacement that took place during the 50s only added to the move toward the suburbs. While this was going on around them, residents of the Laurel Homes were watching their community disappear. They were unable to afford their own home or move elsewhere. They had to stay put. A focus on the city was beginning to dwindle. The Cotton Club closed because the West End lost so much of its population due to urban renewal in the 50s. The West End neighborhood was being destroyed due to the renewal and the displacement of many. Through this change, the Laurel Home residents lost their sense of community and acceptance from the city. 
it was beginning to fade. suburbia, Laurel Homes began to fail. A loss of interest to the area began, which is why the homes began to be looked down on. No one wanted to move to the homes. Many closings happened. A lack of resources began. The area became run down, had crime, and there were not many job opportunities. Along with a lack of resources, beginning in the 1980s, a new movement in the cities was taking place. This movement was the modernist movement. New buildings, houses, and apartments were being built to move people back into the city. With this new movement, Laurel Homes became even less appealing. It was no longer meeting the needs of the new city. With the new city and lack of resources, Laurel Homes began to be described as a slum by outsiders. Hope 6 was passed in 1992 by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development under Bill Clinton. Hope 6 stands for Home Ownership and Opportunity for People Everywhere. Its goal was to transform public housing. Hope 6 proposed national plans to eradicate severely distressed public housing and reduce concentrations of poverty in African Americans by encouraging a greater income mix in public housing projects in nearby neighborhoods. This was the new wave of slum clearance in the 20th century and Laurel Homes was going to be a part of it. Hope 6 was going to get plans to rebuild public housing units. It was going to improve the living environment for residents of severely distressed public housing through demolition, rehabilitation, reconfiguration, or replacement of obsolete projects. It was going to revitalize sites on which such public housing projects are located and contribute to the improvements of the surrounding neighborhoods. Provide housing that will avoid or decrease the concentration of very low income families and build sustainable communities. This is what Hope 6 wanted to accomplish. To do this, demolishing Laurel Homes was the first step. In 1998, the Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Authority was given a grant of $66 million from the Department of Housing and Urban Development due to Hope 6. It was decided to level Laurel Homes and Lincoln Courts, another public housing project, to build City West. Laurel Homes was demolished in 2002. All but three buildings are gone. In 1987, three Laurel Homes units became listed under the National Register of Historic Places. That's why three remain today, only for historical preservation. City West was the first to replace Laurel Homes and Lincoln Courts. Construction began immediately after demolition. The goal of the City West complex was to create mixed income home ownership in a rental apartment complex. A new community is supposed to be created through more years of construction. A new school is planned to be built along with shops, markets, and recreational areas, exactly the amenities that Laurel Homes had before reconstruction of the area. However, the difference in the City West is that mixed income is wanted instead of just one income, that being lower income. It is thought that by having mixed housing units, it will help the upkeep of the community, unlike the Laurel Homes where resources were slowly lost. as of now, with many more on the way. However, the apartments haven't done as well as it was hoped. It is struggling with vacancies and a disinterest in the area. Although City West is brand new and has much to be built, the surrounding area is not ideal for the type of residents that are being marketed to. Crime rates are still high and availability to resources is still low. The area has not been revitalized as it was planned. It shows us the lack of interest by the government. Laurel Homes was an example of how the government was interested in helping those unable to afford a home or even a low-rent apartment. City West displays less of an interest in those unable to afford an average rent or a home cost. The new community caters to middle and upper class rather than to those who once lived there. Laurel Homes was a community made up of residents in the same financial situations and it was easier to build a community. However, with City West being made up of many different residents, building a community will be difficult. With the new dynamics of City West, it brings up the question, where are those who once lived in Laura Homes? The community was displaced. Those who lived there would have a hard time living in City West because of the cost. Although previous Laura Homes residents get a discount on rent, it's still very expensive and there are only a limited number available. City West 
list shows us the government's lack of interest in providing reasonable housing for those who are unable to afford much. Laurel Homes provided a community for those in similar financial situations. However, a lack of interest, care, and resources in the homes caused its downfall. City West doesn't provide enough availability or a welcoming community to those who once lived in the area. Hope 6 displaced a community of people and created a community that doesn't exist because of vacancies and a lack of interest. The money used to build City West could have been used to provide resources and better conditions for those who already lived in the Laurel Homes. The demolition of the homes provided an example of how creative destruction can build immaculate structures, but it destroys communities and leaves out those who once occupied and made an area their home.